Howard in Tom's River, New Jersey. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. But call me Mo, Mo Better, because I'm happy seeing Mo Better, looking Mo Better, and show everyone else how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. When I cut the Zeiss Digital Freeform Progressive Lenses with photochromic extra gray and DuraVision Chrome Anti Glare in your new Oakley 3227, which is the fuller in the 55 eye size and color 01 satin black Oakley, designed by Oakley in California. Lenses cut by me in North Carolina. California, North Carolina, nothing in the middle. So, First, I want to uh, start off by saying that I am an authorized Oakley dealer. I'd also like to start off by saying that I'm too sexy for my shirt. So if you guys, I'm going to take this off and, uh, no, okay, but I digress. No, I am an authorized Oakley dealer, but I've been told that as a small independent optician, I am not legally allowed to post pictures of frames with prices on my website. So if there's a frame that you want, do like Howard did, uh, go to the contact me page of the website. There's an email, just contact me, tell me what frame, model number, size, color you want. There's also a phone number, um, and I'll check on price and availability for you. Again, Howard is getting the 322. Well, let me just show it to you. You don't want to read it. Let me show it to you. Let me take it out of the original packaging as Oakley sends it to me. Your Oakley hard shell case. Your Oakley cleaning cloth that doubles as a carrying bag. And inside of that is... I have no idea. Now, inside of that is the fuller. It looks very much like the... I forget the other frame that it looks like. Um, 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 <laughs> which one was that? The Socket 5.0, I think it is. But it just has it literally almost the same size. Almost the same temples. But it has a little bit more curvature like that. But uh, it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping. And I'm going to put that on there when I ship to you. Again, this is, please work flashlight, please work, the fuller, and I've been told by people you can't see what is here, but if you could see that, it would say Oakley 3227 fuller in the 55 eye size, 17 bridge, color 01, which is satin black. It also says that lenses will be made with love. So, I'm going to pop out the original demo lenses of which you'll be receiving. Put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker. I've got to assign a number to it. You are now Secret Agent 2290. Oop, let me take this top part off. Snip! Congratulations, it's a boy. Um, so, paper clip. I have these imported, by the way. <laughs> they won't let you buy just one. You have to buy like a hundred at a time. So, we're going to program that shape in there. Go programmer, go! And I'm gonna hit the start button. A little stylus is gonna pop up, go around, trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy any genuine authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number on there. So if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account, flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Now, I am considered out of network, so if you have vision insurance, you will get your out of network reimbursement. And sadly, there's a lot of times I'm told I'm cheaper out of network without insurance than it is in network because the places that take your insurance charge so much. I'm too sexy for my sleeve, so I'm going to roll those up. Um, they charge so much to be able to give you an insurance discount. And of course, since your lenses are free for anyone under 40, which Howard ain't. Howard paid the upgrade to the invisible bifocal. And uh, because there's an aging process going around and Howard got it. <laughs> I got it too, so I can't say nothing. Okay, that's the shape that I'll be cutting. That's the actual size. I'm going to magnify it while I work on it. I need to enter his pupillary distance, which is 66 for the two eyes. So half of that is 33. The computer starts at 32.5. So I only have to tap the plus button once. It goes up in half millimeter increments. Now, he did contact me and say by his, his posture, he needs to have the progressive height set lower 
So we're going to drop that down to 16. Usually it's about three above. We're going to go one and a half below because of his body position, the way he holds his head. Because, you know, the guy's got a big future. He keeps his head up. So we're going to change the layout screen from single vision to progressive. And cover up his name, Louie, who just got the Ray-Ban 4105 Shiny Black, the 50 eye size with non-prescription lenses. Your video is coming next week. So I just got notified from PayPal for that. So, where was that? Oh, his lenses. So, you are getting the Zeiss Light D 1.59, which is the refractive index. I know you can't read this. If you could read it, it would say, man, this guy's good. Um, Photo Fusion Extra. Take the lens out of the packet. It has the markings already on there for the progressive lens. I need a... Two blocks, or as I call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I'm going to use super glue. No, I'm going to use these two double-sided adhesive stickers. The black side is the sticky side, but I do have a magnetic personality. The place the sticker on one. Do the same thing now for the second one. Speaking of magnets, there is a magnet on the back of here. It's going to do its job twice. Just after I pull that paper away to make the black side sticky, there's another magnet there in the arm that that corresponds to. I'm gonna, the reason why I put those dots on there, it tells me that it's oriented in there just perfectly. The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame, your eyes inset, and in this case, below the geometric center, which does not happen often, but we've crossed that bridge before Howard has, so we're going to fix that this time. I do custom lenses. You tell me how you want it. I say, okay. I'm going to hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the lens that ain't right. Just like me. I ain't right. Pull the paper away. Make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Take the left lens out of the packet. And before I go any further, the part of the reason I'm switching to Zeiss, not only they're great lenses, not only are they a leader in precision optics since 1846, but they give me tons of documentation that I can provide to you. I love that fact. When I first started selling online, I thought, how are people going to trust the glasses they get online? Of course, me being a licensed optician, I went to school for this. I went to college. I passed the state board exams. I'm not just a machine operator. I'm not just a machine sticky operator. Speaking of sticky, let's do that. All right, same optical center height, same PD, get everything laid out, and then I'll finish up what I was yabbering about yada 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 um hit that button we're good there but i can provide to you it tells you everything about your lenses it does not hurt my wife always used to say document 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 that's what she loved about email she could go back and refer but that shows you exactly what you're getting so i want to highlight that your prescription for the right eye plus three minus one and a quarter at 170 plus three minus one and a quarter at 170 your bifocal strength this is the right lens the zeiss same thing for the left which is actually ou to the axis ou means is latin for both eyes plus three minus one and a quarter at 175 that is on there now there's two ways you can write a prescription minus cylinder plus cylinder that is when years ago in some of the ophthalmic equipment the doctors use still have plus cylinder so they write it that way for me as an optician or when i order your lenses everything is in minus cylinder from the md the medical doctor side down if there's no md after your name you're gonna do it in minus cylinder that's there the other nice thing oh by the way if you guys missed any of that let me recap i know you're moaning about that but you'll be telling that joke tomorrow they give me extra documentation again minus cylinder plus cylinder shows you exactly what you're getting the material, the brand of Progressive, the refractive index, the type of, of that. It doesn't say the anti, well actually, does it say the anti-glare? Somewhere on here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. But these are digital freeform lenses so that when you do separate readings, there's compensated based on how far it sits from your eye. That's why contact lenses are slightly weaker because they sit closer in. From your eye than your glasses do but you can provide when you go to the doctor and they ask what you are wearing you can show them this um there's howard there's something else i want you to show your doctor but that's a proctologist and uh you'll have to do that on another exam date and uh, but again i digress <laughs> and, uh, so 
speaking of doctors, everybody wants to be married to a doctor. You know, women do. But wouldn't it be terrible to be married to a gynecologist? Because after a long day at work, I'm sure they come home thinking, God, if I see one more of those again today. <laughs> okay. I digress. My wife does not like me getting silly in my videos. Stay professional. But I remind her that if you are a professional, you can joke around with what you're doing. If you have no clue what you are doing, then you have to act professional to fool people. But it tells you the laser, every invisible bifocal comes with laser engravings. You've seen me use this tool to get everything lined up. I may have to revert back to it. It tells the refractive index, the brand, the, the height, the strength of the progressive lens, all that is on there. So where was I at? I guess I gotta get back to work. That's where I was at. But yeah, so you're going to get all this documentation with Zeiss lenses. I've been an Essilor man for years. I can still get Essilor. I'm using Essilor brand lab equipment, but it's, I just love the fact that I can now provide everyone with that to verify that you're getting these made. By the way, I offer a VIP service. I know I joke around a lot, but uh, you are getting a licensed optician who understands optics, who understands his complaint about how he holds his head who understands that you want documentation of what you are getting for the, the money you have worked hard for that you're sharing with me to provide for my family. You're going to get all of that. And I have uh, one more gift for you. I found it in my nose. I created it. I want to share it with you. Let me pull it out of my nose. Ah, there it is. I made that. Howard, you're going to get that too. <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, I, I do like coffee. Why do you ask? <laughs> So, okay, let's get to work here. <sighs> Blow that off. You like that? <sighs> ooh, ooh. Okay, so let's wake up the computer. Job ID number 2290. This is, machine is called the Edger. This is a blocker tracer. It traces the frame, then puts the block onto the lens. Remember block? Come on, we talked about this. Don't you remember? This is the Edger. This is what's going to cut the lens. This is the cutting wheel. It's going to act as like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind your lens material from this size down to this size. This wheel in the center is going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Now I'm going to do something unique on this one. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, Hindex plastic, or Trivex, which are different um, lens materials, I would select that, but we're going to stick with polycarbonate. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface, but I will put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of your lens. And that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day. Um, and here's one more thing. Normally I cut it on auto. I'm going to manually override that. That's the hand symbol. I want to automatically, I want to tell the machine where to place the bevel based on this frame. Press that on there firmly. Now the magnet's going to do a job a second time. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the chuck, or by now, you know I like to call it the Charles, because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. Place that in there. Hit start. The door closes. The dirty door. I should have cleaned that. I knew I was having company come over. The, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be tra traced by two white styluses. Make sure the lens is large enough to uh, fit into the frame. As you can see, it's tracing the shape of the right lens. And it's still measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know if I were to override it to uh, automatically do that. But I'm going to change the bevel this time because of the wrap nature of this frame. I have a frame that's much straighter with 45 degree temples. This is wrapped more. So let me put them back on so I can see what I'm doing. Um, I want to match. Now I ordered the lenses with the same curvature. So again, licensed optician. No one else is going to do that for you. I had them do a knife edge grind as thin as possible. I want to, I could have it match the front curvature. Well, that's the automatic button that it normally does. I could match the, tell it where to do just in relation to the front bevel all the way around. I could do the rear bevel. I can do a percentage of. Right now it's right at 50%. The lens is a millimeter and a half. I could do 0.74 on the front, 0.75 on the back. But this button refers to the base curve of the lens, which is 4.90. I ordered a five base curve lens to fit. Do I have it? Do I have it? Come on, where's my base curve clock? Here's something you normally don't see. Let me dig around in here. This is called a Geneva lens clock. 
it is set here but when you put it on a flat surface like on my lensometer plate it comes down to zero that is because there is a pin in the middle that will measure the curvature of any surface put it on my stomach it measures a six pack no and I put it on this lens it is up there and this is a six I like to bring it down about one base curve so I'm doing it at a five and of course this is above where it's cut but there you see five lenses now it's going to measure something differently on the back it's going to be in the red over there the curvature of the back of the lens versus the curvature on the front of the lens did I mention that I was a licensed optician did I mention that I pulled this out of my nose? <laughs> Did I mention I'm now going to hit, wait, yeah, 4.90. So it's going to do one millimeter on the front of the lens, half a millimeter in the back to follow that curvature. I'm going to hit start. The cutting wheel is going to start up. If I had cleaned the door, you would see that. Maybe you can hear it. The lens is going to drop down onto the cutting wheel. Water is spraying in the back of the machine to collect the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel, also known as Schwarf. May the Schwarf be with you for all you Spaceballs fans. Smoke if you got them. But polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex cut wet, meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now water will spray on the polycarbonate, but only for the last 20 seconds. Polycarbonate cuts dry, so no water is spraying on it. Your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lens material. The same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel from flying debris in their government issue Oakleys. You have your Seymour Better issued Oakleys. At all, speaking of protection, it has 100% UVA and UV protection. Zeiss, who has partnered with the American Cancer Society because they offer more UV protection all the way up to 400 nanometers. The industry standard is 390. Zeiss takes it a step further. Zeiss UV coatings go to 11. <laughs> but, uh, for all you Spinal Tap fans out there. But the alls go to 11 here at the Haberdashery. Um, but it also, speaking of protection, it has the photochromic lenses. By the way, Zeiss invented the photochromic lens that turns dark when you go outside. They sold that product to Essilor, which Essilor branded as Transitions. The Zeiss photochromic and Essilor Transitions have 30 to 40 percent blue light protection that you hear being talked about nowadays. The extra active that Howard is getting has 50 to 70 percent protection. Now the other nice thing about the extra active is designed for extra active people so it will turn darker outdoors but will also turn 30 to 50 percent dark behind a windshield where the Zeiss photochromic and the Essilor Transitions Generation 8 well 7 and 8 do not turn dark in a car. These extra will turn 30 to 50 percent dark. So I'll now open the door with my mind. I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. But I still have to dry things off with a paper towel. So look, there's a little schwarf right there. I love when it pulls off. You see that? So I'm going to collect it neatly. I'm going to remove it off of your lens. Use my thumbnail. My old Santinelli machine, I had to do this all the time. And I literally wore a V-shaped bevel onto my nail. And that's why I can't have nice thumbnails. But I'm very OCD about cleaning, so once it's all off your lens, I collect it neatly into one pile and then wipe it on the floor. <laughs> Drives my wife crazy. Now, what you cannot see is the bevel is now on that front surface going around the lens. Can you see that? Can you see that? I can't see what you guys are seeing. I can't see. Let's do this. Can you use this lens? That's a magnifying lens, too. Can you see that bevel? Okay, so... Let's grab my Phillips head screwdriver. Get out of the way. Grab my Phillips head screwdriver. Do a little bit of lefty loosey. For those of you who want to know, my Phillips head is red. My flat blade is black. That's how I can tell them apart so quickly. I've carried these with me for years. I put band-aids around the tip so I know at places in the past these were my screwdrivers and no one else. They are reversible. Ooh. 
all this new stuff you're seeing in this video. So, Lefty Lucy. Let's see if I can tuck it in without taking it out all the way. Tuck it in the outside corner. That's the nice thing using unbreakable lenses. Pop that in there. Come on, pop, pop. Flip this over. Put your frame against a rubber block. I do not want to use a hardwood surface because I could mar the finish of your frame. Tighten that down. Quick inspection. That's tightened all the way. That's in there good. Let's go ahead and start cutting the left lens. Flip that over to L. L is Latin for not right. Place the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky Baby, the Chuckarama, the Chuckster, the Chuckaroo, or today I'm calling it the Howard. Hit the green button just like before the door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens again is going to be traced by the two styluses formerly known as the white styluses. They are a little dirty. Going around tracing the shape of the left side of the frame. And again, measuring the thickness of the lens. Even though I'm going to tell it, uh-uh, do it the way I say it. Follow that front curvature. So, where's my stylus? Let's, you know what? Let's use this. Let's use that side of it. Let's use the middle. I can't use the middle. All right, let's see if this will work. Hit that button. Hey, it starts up. But it's following that contour of the frame, that front bevel. Look at that. Nothing on the front of the lens. That's why I put a safety bevel on the back. If any portion of it protrudes, it's nice and smooth. Let's go ahead and take this block off. Pull the sticker away. Use my hand-approved drying method. You like that? Dry everything with your hand. Throw it back into the bin. With stickers, without stickers. Add to my sense of accomplishment st sticker collection. Yes, I am a pack rat, but I save all of those because it, it truly does give me a sense of a kind of corny and saying, but it's just a daily reminder that I'm doing something well, that this many people come back and have me make their glasses. I'm hoping this is big enough that I have to have a double wide casket when they bury me and that'll be next to me. So this thing keeps getting in the way. How about if I just tear this up, put it in the shredder and I send you just the mulch you can put in your yard. So we're going to come down here to the lensometer, turn the axis wheel to 170, actually turn it on, put it in over that black dot, read the power, and I'm getting a hieroglyphic. No, I'm getting plus three, exactly halfway between two and four. That's where you will find three. In the black, blacks are magnification. That's why there's a plus sign. You are a hyperope, a compound hyperope. If you are simple hyperope, you would only need magnification like over-the-counter reading glasses provide. Compound means that you have astigmatism correction. So with your glasses off, everything is much too small far away, so they will magnify three diopters, which is 12 steps. Everything's in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1. So you're on the 10th. 12th rung of the ladder. Now once the object is the, magnified the correct size, you have one and a quarter diopters of astigmatism correction. Uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look like or the letters P and F. Think of it as a fine tune knob. You have a plus three here. You have a second curve 90 degrees away. Not 45, 90. Not 10, 90. Stay with me folks. And that's how you line those two curves up to make everything crisp. And we're going to line that up to meridian 170, a straight line is 0 to 90 to 180. We're going to turn that knob to about 170, 10 degrees away from the 180 meridian here. So let's check that second curvature. And I am getting plus 175 going away from 0. You can see the black plus emblem, the red minus. That's for myopes, you are hyper up. You are far sighted, near sighted people perfectly sighted people, which is amotropia, which means you need no corrective vision. So you're one tick mark away from two. How did we get 175? If you had three dollars and you let someone borrow a dollar twenty-five, you would have 175. Speaking of which, Howard, let me, let me hold a dollar. Now your left eye, again I mentioned you were OU to the axis. That means both eyes, you have the same power in both eyes. You only have a five degree axis change on your left eye from 170 to 175. Now that is your distance correction. 
you got the Zeiss Light D Digital Freeform Progressive. You have another two and a quarter diopters of bifocal strength. This is known as the ad. People see that on their prescription and think, I need two and a quarter reading glasses. No, you need that in addition to what's up top. If you are a minus three, you add those two numbers together, minus three and plus two and a quarter, you would need a minus 75 as reading glasses, even though they don't I can make it for you. But so you add these two numbers, three and two and a quarter. And if you were to buy over the counter reading glasses, you would need plus five and a quarter. Now you might find, you can generally find a three, maybe a 350. Every once in a while there's a four, you will never find a five and a quarter reading glasses. That's too strong. And of course, over the counter reading glasses don't correct for astigmatism. They don't turn dark when you go outside. They don't have an anti-glare coating and they don't come with nose art. <laughs> Okay, where am I at? Oh, that's it. Okay, so let's come back down here. I play with Howard. I've talked with him on the phone a couple times. He called me about the frames. That's the one. Th I am a people person, and that's the one thing about internet glasses is I don't get to interact with people when they just place an order online. But I talked with him, joked around with him. He's a good guy. He's the... Uh, he is a truck driver. He's my favorite truck driver in Tom's River, New Jersey, as far as he knows. <laughs> so, oh, that's not my Phillips head. That's my Phillips head. The reason I'm holding it over the case, if the screw comes out, I want it to fall in there. But I always do my best to loosen it just enough without it coming out all the way. That's, again, the other nice thing. If I use plastic or high index, which is a more brittle material, popping it in can flake the edge of the lens. That does not happen with these high impact polycarbonate lenses. So that's why I don't take the lenses out all the way, the screw out. If I were, I would hold it this way because so the screw does not fall onto the table. And then it bounces off the table and falls on the floor and I'd have to get on my hands and knees and uh, to look on the floor. By the way, I was told Howard I was gonna make his video yesterday and I had to notify him that I didn't. The true story of why I could not do your video was that yesterday was my mother's birthday, her 82nd birthday. And while she was waiting for me to come pick her up and take her to dinner so she could get prime rib, one of her favorites at a steakhouse that only serves it on Friday, is her TV was out. So she called the Cablevision people and they told her to go around the back of the TV and try and fix some things. So she got down on the floor on her hands and knees and then could not get back up. So she calls EMS and they convince her, they do an EKG test. Her heart rate was a little elevated because she was excited to go out to dinner and then excited she was aggravated, her TV wouldn't work. And then frustrated she couldn't get up off the floor even though she knew damn well she could not get up off the floor if she put herself down there. She didn't fall, she voluntarily got on the floor. She lives in assisted living place. She called the office, they didn't want to touch her for liability reasons. They told her to call EMS, which she did, and she calls me to meet her at the hospital. I did not get out of the ER room until 1.30 when they released her. Came home, still got up at 6.30 this morning. Came in here to work. Yes, I'm tired, thank you for asking. Yes, I drank an extra cup of coffee, can you tell? Take that off, throw that on there, add to my sticker collection. But Howard, I appreciate your patience. That is the reason why I could not do the video when I said I was going to do it tomorrow. Speaking of hands and knees. But you only got one mother, God bless her, 82 years old. She spends her birthday in the emergency room making friends with the doctors. It was fun and exciting for her. I went, <laughs> I grabbed two books, sat there and read for a long time. Realized that I needed an e-reader. I was going to get some type of... Um, e-reader, the Kindle, the Fire, the Paperwhite, whatever, but I, I love the I, I love to read, and I love the idea that I could carry around the Library of Congress with me. I don't have to carry two books. I carry a highlighter pen because I always like to highlight certain sentences that move me, and I go back after I've read the book, flip through the pages, reread re -read what has been highlighted, and but I'm hoping on the e-readers that will just give me a list, a compilation where I can just go to one page. The other thing, I had to get my phone out because there was a word I had to look up. I couldn't find the, didn't know the definition of, and I hear, and you just highlight that on your e-reader. It'll tell you the definition. So I think I'm going to get that. Although I'm a little bit late. I should have got my wife, yes, honey, to buy me one for Christmas, but I'll just have to get Howard to buy me one um, for, for doing his video. So where am I? Oh, turn the axis wheel to 175. 175, which is the axis of the left eye. Check the power. 
Can we get me a bigger flashlight so I can find it? Getting plus three. Let's check the astigmatism correction of the left lens. When the next bar is coming to focus, 175 just past the 150 going towards two. What I'm doing is known as final inspection. The other part I need to measure is pupillary distance, which is 66. So I'm going to turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb. By the way, how do you like US Optical, the fastest lab in America? They're not a Zeiss lens uh, lab, but I like their PD stick, so I use them. Place it against my thumb. When I hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 66 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. The lower than average height of the invisible bifocal should be 16. When we look to the bottom of the frame, not the bottom of the lens, but the middle of the metal, we're getting 16. We're getting 16. Now, the other thing I did, normally, most of the progressives I use have a corridor height starting at 18. This is the, what's written on here, the light D14, which means it's designed for lower corridors. So it's a shorter corridor. If these were really narrow glasses, this is the type of bifocal I would get to so you get to the reading quicker. But because of his body position, he spends so much time looking out the top for driving. I lowered the height of the where the invisible bifocal starts. And by the way, let's see if we can do that. You can almost see that. You will see a wave form. The top of the lens is straight across. When I move it, look at the line, that black line below the light. By the way, I had new carpet put in. I painted yesterday for Howard's video. I got new lighting, um, all new thumbtacks. <laughs> you're, you're believing this, right? Right, right? But okay, look at the black line to the far of the light. You can see where the progressive, you will see a, a wave type of motion that is extra magnification. That is plus five and a quarter at the bottom, plus three at the top. You can see how it, how it moves on there. Pretty cool effect, huh? 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 You see what? Kids, kids, you see what I'm doing there? You see what I'm doing? Okay, so, um, oh yeah, I gotta clean this. I did a final inspection, check the power of the lenses, check the width of the, his pupillary distance, check the height there. Now this is the portion of every video that as I clean your lenses, I mentioned that there's free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Not only that, before I get to that, there's also, two, well yeah, I'll get to that later. So, yeah, man, that coffee was good. I'm gonna go have me another cup. <laughs> so... You know, I, I first started off drinking Red Bull, not knowing whether I would like them, but I tried them. I really like them. I don't know why more people don't like them. I just start drinking one, then I drink another one until I really like those things. Yeah, it keeps me going. Okay, no. Um, but when I clean these, I mentioned you get free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And Tom's River, New Jersey is still in the U.S. But when you get these in the mail, there is a small chance that these will fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And I forget which percentage have one ear closer in than the other. But if for any reason these don't fit perfectly when you take them out of the box, just stop by your local optical place, your eye doctor, tell them if it's too loose or too tight or too high on one side. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly to get them to the right height. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. Flip them over, press down. There is no wobble. Check the tension on each spring hinge. If one was looser or tighter, I would adjust it accordingly. Check to make sure that these overlap perfectly, that neither temple is askew like that. Now, this is where I wanted to mention that I am... Most everyone now is charging tax on the internet. I'm in North Carolina. North Carolina considers eyeglasses a medical device. Imagine that. There is no tax in North Carolina on medical devices, so I do not charge tax. Tax-free and free shipping. Now, the Oakley 3227 Fuller sells for $183. In fact, if you want to know the price of any Oakley frame that I offer, go to Oakley. I, I signed a contract that I have to sell frames for the MSRP. That's why I give people free single vision prescription lenses when you buy the frames at the MSRP, Manufacturer's Suggested Retail Price. The Zeiss Digital Freeform Progressive Lens, $149.99 Progressive Additional Lens, because you look downward, it progressively gets stronger and stronger. The Extra Active Photo Fusion is $109.99. The DuraVision Chrome DVC is $69.99 for a total of $512.97. 
if I was to charge tax, if you were to buy these from anyone, I'm not going to charge tax, but if you were to buy the same frame and you could find the lenses that cheap from someone else on the internet, um, and they charge you tax, $183 plus $149.99, well actually I got it there, $512.97, let's start that, I think I need more coffee, times 7.5%, which is the state sales tax on anything else, you would pay an additional $38.47. You don't have to pay that from me. And of course, free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Now, Howard, I send out a selfie request in every package. I want two selfies, one indoors with them clear, one outdoors with them dark. I also send out cleaning instructions, not only on your frame and lenses, but for the premium microfiber cloth that I provide, your Oakley cleaning cloth, your Zeiss cleaning cloth, as well as your case. So it too will last you for years. No other seller does that on the internet. I field test the cleaning cloth that I provide you. So that way if you get these in the mail, you know they work. That it has been tested. <laughs> so you don't want me to take mine out of my pocket to clean your lenses. I'm going to use yours. But I just want to make sure they're nice and clean before I go ahead and alt activate them with a strong burst of ultraviolet light. Now, as you get, here's a good example. So Howard has the extra active photofusion lens, photochromic. I have the regular photochromic in blue, so it's almost the same. They have about three to five percent. The the Essilor extra active lenses have about five to seven percent. They're a little bit darker indoors. The Zeiss lenses are clearer than Essilor. And the new Essilor Transitions Generation 8 now turn at the speed that the Zeiss lenses have always done. So I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. Now, as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for photochromic transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, this is important. Pay attention, everyone. All photochromic transition lenses will turn dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks they're exposed to the sun. After that, they will work for years at maximum performance. Now, the, the, the reason why they don't turn dark in a car is your windshield has UV protection in it to protect your dashboard from cracking from sitting in the sun. Now, these will, the extra active, will turn 30 to 50% dark behind a... a Windshield. Now these will continue to get darker over the next couple weeks. Come on, Howard. We talked about that. Don't you remember? Now they're all photochromic transition lenses are also temperature sensitive, meaning they will get darker when it's 85 degrees and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But our mind, everyone, when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable. They're miserable. Nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. Having said that, the extra active lenses from Zeiss and Essilor will get darker in hotter weather. They're designed for extra active people who spend extra amounts of time outside. And since Howard spends, as a truck driver, spends extra amounts of time behind a windshield, these will get dark 30 to 50 percent. So, where a regular tr photochromic and transition 7 and 8 will not. Now, if you have a convertible, yes, they will darken. And as I keep talking, these are going to keep getting lighter and lighter. But it's going to take a little bit longer since these get extra dark. And this is just the first time they've been activated. But uh, do me a favor, not only like this video, subscribe to my channel. Click the bell icon so you can get future, future notifications of videos when I'm less caffeinated. And uh, <laughs> my condolences for y'all having to watch those. But uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as Free Prescription Lenses. On Twitter as Free RX Lenses. Again, I am an authorized Oakley dealer. So if there's any frame that you want after watching this video, just go to the Contact Me page on the website that you see there. There's a phone number, although it's better to reach me by email because I don't hear the phone ringing if I'm cutting lenses. But uh, my phone is on vibrate. When I'm not doing a video, I can take it out, answer it, go to my Chromebook, answer emails that way. But uh, I'll check on the price and availability of you. Just tell me the model number, the size and color you want, and I'll, I'll get back to you on that. You can also leave a question or comment in the comment section below. In fact, Howard, why don't you leave a comment both before and after you get your glasses, after watching this video and then after you get them. The, um, again, thank you for watching. Howard in Toms River, New Jersey. Thank you for the purchase of the Oakley 3227 Fuller with Zeiss Light D digital freeform progressive lenses with the photochromic extra activity with the 
with the DuraVision Chrome Anti-Glare Coating, which reduces glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. The street lights, stoplights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights. And now everyone else has gotten a chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.